All right, so we are going into part two of our notes. You just finished your station um, one, which was the hair. So station two deals with fingerprints. So just a little background on fingerprints. Um, two fingerprints were found at the scene of Anna's death. A full print on the handwritten note in Anna's bag and a partial print on the glass were found on the floor. Before you dive into analysis of this evidence, you need to learn a bit about the features of fingerprints that can be analyzed to distinguish one person from the next. Printing, fingerprinting has been used as a tool to help investigations since the 19th century. Because no two people have the same fingerprints, not even identical twins, a fingerprint found at a scene is a useful way to match a person of interest with that scene. Fingerprints are the tiny ray spiral and concentric patterns called ridges found on the tip of each finger. Fingerprints form before you are even born and remain unchanged during your lifetime. The ridges of all fingerprints form patterns called arches, loops, and whirls. The arch um, looks like this. So arches slope upward and then down. So they go up and then they come down um, like very narrow mountains. The plain arch is the simplest form pattern because it starts on one side of the finger um, cascades upward and then it comes down. Um, the tenter arch is similar to the plain arch except that the ridges in the center of the tenter arch um, converge and thrust upward, um, creating the appearance of a pitch tent. So it looks like a little tent down here, where these are more like regular, like like they look like mountains. Um, the loop pattern forms when ridges curve back on themselves, forming a loop shape. There are two types, radial loops pointing toward the thumb and ulnar loops pointing towards the pinky. So you go in one way, you loop around, and then you come back out the same way you came in. Whirls form circular or spiral patterns, or like a, think about like a whirlpool or something like that. Uh, fingerprints, um, minute. Um, in addition to the overall ridge patterns discussed above, when experts compare two fingerprints, they look at the arrangement, shape, size, and number of lines in the fingerprint patterns to distinguish one from another. They also analyze very tiny characteristics called minute, which are tiny fingerprint ridge details, and make sure to match at least 12 to 15 points of similarity between two prints to establish that they are identical. So did you know when two fingerprints show similarities with at least 12 um, minute, it is called a 12 point match, something you may have heard on your favorite crime show, um, crime scene show. So keep in mind that um, investigators don't usually analyze fingerprint patterns by hand. The prints are photographed and then loaded into a computer base. Um, the computer system cross checks the pattern against other fingerprints in the database. So you've probably seen that on shows like CSI. So below are 10 of the most frequent minute um, with the ridge ending being the most frequent and the triple fork being the least frequent. So you have the ridge ending, you have um, the fork, you have the short ridge, you have the dot, um, you have the hook, you have the eye, double fork, the delta, triple fork, um, and then you also have the bridge. So then that will move you into station two, which will be looking at um, fingerprint samples. Um, so after the fingerprint, the last station is going to be the digital evidence backgrounds. Um, <clears throat> so digital forensic, forensics is a branch of forensic science that focuses on evidence found on devices that store data, such as computers, smartphones, or tablets. Um, for investigators, an unlocked smartphone can be a vitally important source of evidence as it often contains photos, text messages, emails, voicemails, social media posts, internet search, and browser history, and location data of where the person has been. So when looked at in combination, all of this evidence can provide investigators with a better picture of the person's relationships, activities, and behaviors before their death. In a criminal case, the evidence can also help investigators confirm alibis and help build a case against a specific suspect. 
Um, that brings us to a career connection. Um, so a digital forensics investigator, also called computer forensic techs, can work in a variety of fields, government, legal, software development, or even finance. They are called on for many reasons, such as to determine how a computer hacker got into a secure system or to check the security of a bank's computer system. Digital forensic investigators are called when there is a digital component to a case, usually a cell phone or a computer. So once they are given the go-ahead and receive the component, they begin processing the device. Data is put into a format that is easier to sift through by creating keyword searches, categorizing pictures, and pulling out other information such as GPS locations, text messages, and emails. The digital forensics investigator then applies their expertise to determine what's relevant to an investigation and give this information to law enforcement and attorneys. At the end of the case, they may be called to testify or provide sworn, or sworn statements. Um, Mark Davis is a di digital forensic investigator, um, says an important skill is the drive to solve a puzzle. So you aren't always successful in all of your attempts or adventures of investigation. You fail a lot, but you can't look at non-successful attempt as a failure, but rather the elimination of a possibility, which is progress. So if you, again, are interested in a career, maybe you don't want to be as hands-on um, on the biomedical science side and you like the digital aspects of things or you're technology prone, but you still want to work in like a forensic setting, this will be an awesome career for you. So, um, you have two different videos, which you're going to watch on the PLTW website because these videos, um, aren't necessarily going to work, but it shows you her, t um, like story feed. It shows you like a timeline, um, of what she's been doing basis based off social media and all things of that nature. And you have to kind of create a timeline based off of that. And that's it.